Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Your Mental. Just a reminder that this podcast is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. I know they are hard to find, and I get that. I have a bunch of resources on my website if you need them, but I am not your clinician. I am a psychologist, but I am not your psychologist. So if you need any specific help, please look for the help of a licensed mental health professional. Learn all you can learn from the podcast. Enjoy the episode. All right. So everyone, once again, welcome to Mind Your Mental. Today we have Dr. Jay Barnett. Where's my music? (laughs) I don't care if y'all ever get tired of that. I'm never going to get tired of that. I'm going to play that every single time I have a guest. So we decided to do today's episode as a mailbag episode. I asked you guys a bunch of questions. Y'all sent some good questions, some of them wildly inappropriate, and we're going to answer all of them (laughs) as well. So I'll just start with the one that most people want to know. Dr. J. Barnett, we have someone who has emotional aptitude, who's out here helping out the the Black men of the world. And the question people want to know is, are you single as well? And if you do have a girlfriend, can she fight as well? So yes. So yes, I am single. And I don't really know if that's a good thing because (laughs) I'm... I, I, and the reason I'll be honest is because the, the work that I do is vast. And I think at times an individual like myself definitely needs a, a safe space for myself as, as, as much as I create that for others. And, and, and was, was in a relationship uh, a couple of years ago and, and it was distance and then didn't, didn't work out. But I'm definitely someone who's not opposed or who's closed because you will find a lot of brothers that are like, yeah, I'm single and I'm not looking, but I always say I'm single and open. And so I think that's the best way to answer the question. And but then also learning to live my life in a way, because I, as much as I am public, I also think that there are things that should remain protected. And so it's it's but it comes with the territory. And it's a question that I get often and I don't evade it so it is what it is so yeah i get asked to have my husband on the show all the time and i i say it's never gonna happen yeah. it's never gonna happen yeah i don't need y'all being yeah. in my husband's face yeah. <laughs> no and and that's the one thing that I, I i do uh respect about what you do hey everyone just a reminder that mind your mental is not just a podcast it is also a amazing community if i do say so myself it's phenomenal i mean you get more access to me what more could you want in this life? So if you want to join the community, if you're not already on the community, go to my social media. My social media is the same, Raquel Martin PhD, and DM me the word community so you can get details on joining this amazing flipping community. You get more access to me, y'all. Like, <laughs> I'm a delight. All right. All right. Hope to see you there. Is that you're able to provide these perspectives and provide these different thoughts while understanding that there is a space that you have left for yourself, which is for you and your husband. And I think that is so admirable because so many times in the field that we're in, we have to truly be careful because sometimes people will develop an emotional attachment. They Mm -hmm. develop some type of attachment to the work that we do. And then they find themselves becoming overly invested into every part of our life. So I love how you keep your boys and your husband says, I I can be for you guys, but this is for me. And I think it's important for us to understand that we have to leave something for us. And and times of people says, well, you you don't have to be private or hide it or anything like that. No, it's it's safeguarding. And the same with myself. When I was dating and somebody distance and we've been dating for a while, I thought it was very important to guard that. And I've always moved and believe in moving as if I was married. Most people don't know my status because of the way that I move. And I thank my mentors early on for, for teaching me how to move in integrity and how to move in such a way that it's not to keep people guessing, but move in a way that, that keeps you from the foolery. You know what I mean? And so. Uh, yeah, I like that. It's keeping you away from the foolery because to, there's too many people. I mean, I can laugh a lot of stuff off just because <laughs> I don't know if I don't know you. It, it's, it's just odd to just have these comments. And some of the crazy stuff literally makes me laugh. But I also it's just absurd. And I'll be like, what? 
that was super rude. And it, it's not even funny, but it just makes me laugh. But like with my family and with my boys and even with the whole aspect of consent, my, my son, my oldest, both of them actually now, they're very open with telling me if they want a picture and if they don't want a picture. Most of the time they don't. And knowing that, I can't imagine how they would feel about, even if I took the picture, a million people across platforms looking at that picture or video, like they... For I, I say this all the time. I, for six months, my son did not give me kisses. My oldest, I always ask if it's okay. And I swear for six months straight, he said no. <laughs> but I had to respect that. I cry in the corner like an adult. But if I'm teaching, if we're talking about consent, I want him to know this, that that's normal and, and that aspect. But I can't imagine sharing that kind of stuff. And I think some things need to just be with us and be sacred. And I think mental health wise, I, I, I wish more people would realize that because you are more disconnected when you're recording it. I remember I was trying to record my son playing basketball and I asked my hun, my husband, because I walked away for a second, could he, did he take pictures? And he said, no. And I was like, well, how are you going to remember it? And he said, I'm watching it, Raquel. That's how I'm going to remember it. Oh. And I said, my memory is terrible. Okay. I need all of it. But he made a very good point because when you have a phone out and you're not able to be as present. Part of it is anxiety with forgetting stuff. But part of it is just very much like, all right, that was a that was a very good point. I have I have no rebuttal to that actually. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put it down. So I I think more people should understand that it's okay to keep something sacred because a lot of people feel the need to comment about stuff and that'll put thoughts in your head that's just like oh man, listen man, I I, I was I'll share this story years ago. I was dating someone and and I went public with her and and she had her own platform and. I can just remember we posted a picture by the beach or something, and I put something underneath it. And man, of course, you get the comments, right, that people are putting underneath the pictures, but the messages that I was receiving, why are you with her? I don't think she's a good <laughs> you. Oh, and I mean, oh. man, it was, I, I, I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, it, it was so uh, debilitating in some ways that I, I after that, relationship, I said, oh, I, I can't do that. And and as you were alluding to, just to even protect your own mental health, because yeah. you are individuals who work in this space. So navigating daily is, 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 is just really us being mindful because mm -hmm. as I am helping others navigate their own mental challenges, I also have to be mindful that I am still navigating my own. And, and I think that's what people miss when they connect with us because they see our gift put on this platform and see yeah. the ways that we are able to connect and to open people up and to, to provide insight. And, and, and I get it. But then again, they don't process that we're still humans who are also on a journey. And though we appear to be well in most areas, there are still some areas that we may not be so well in. And I have no issue with being transparent. That really bothered. It, it did a lot to my mental because mm -hmm. it's, it didn't affect how I saw her, but it impacted me internally because I'm like, this is somebody that I chose. Dang. But, it, you know, it's what my mom often says. Um, and, and my mother has such wisdom. She's always says, King, let me tell you something. Everybody is not happy for you. And I think yeah. that seems uh, or sounds so simple, but it's really true. And I don't think people are intentionally not happy for you, but there's a lot of individuals that have not processed their own unhappiness. So without them knowing, they can project envy, project malice, project just j such jealousy. And so I, I love that 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 you uh, guard your family. That's That's so dope. Thank you. Because I also will, t I will talk to many people like they've lost their minds. It's also like people like, oh, my goodness, you're supposed to be a clinician. I'm like, you are not my patient. Did you receive an invoice from me? You didn't. Right. One of the reasons right. I got on therapy. So is that I mean, got on social media so that you guys can understand that we're normal people. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. You don't want it with me. Don't yeah. be talking. What? So if anything, it's also protecting y'all because like y'all do. I will forget. I will forget all or remember, like I'm for Philly. all. You don't want it. I'm really, I'm trying to help you. Okay. Because one I, I, side step. Doc, I, <laughs> Doc, believe it or not, I live vicariously through you because you have. What? 
I, and I'm serious. I, <laughs> listen, when, listen, when I say this, I watch you say things and I'll be like, man, I wish I could say that. I wish I could be that just, uh, because, uh, <laughs> You know, I came from, I was a pro athlete, so I have a mm-hmm. mentality than most people. And so I am constantly tucking him away. No, sit down. Because, and and, and I love that you have that freedom. And man, it, it's, 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 and, and watching you kind of like go after certain topics and certain things, I'm like, yeah, get them. Because I know, <laughs> and, and, and I know that I can't because I'm a black man. I'm a black man. Hmm has an athletic background. So anything that sort of swings the pendulum to where it may look like I'm being aggressive or a little too over assertive, it changes the dynamic of how people view me. And that's something that my manager, we all discuss. And I, in link, I discuss this with them because sometimes I'm just like, man, dude, I want to say that, Jay, you can't. And I, and I, and, and, and I would tell you, I'm in my 40s, so I, I'm okay with not being able to say certain things. And then the other part of me appreciate my brotherhood and the circle where I could just be a nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yo, huh. listen, there be some stuff I be wanting to post and I be like, and this is for the group chat because I there be some stuff and I be like, and they going to say some stuff. You're right. You got to keep it for the group chat. But, I, you, but sometimes I be really wanting to. And you got, I just got to be like, that's for the group chat. It was good though, but that's for the group chat. Like sometimes you really just want to, and then this mother said this and I was like, oh, for real? Oh, oh, you're like, oh, is that what we, is this, is this helping the message? Like I, I, I've decided to limit myself to one rant a week. Yo, because yo. my business partner, Elijah, who you met previously, he was, he made this joke. He was like, yeah, her name's Dr. Martin, but sometimes she changed it to Dr. Malcolm, like Malcolm X. And I'll be like, I'll be trying, I'll be trying, but some stuff be making me so mad. And I'm like, I can't be the only one who sees this, right? I'm not the only one who sees this. Oh, no. <laughs> Trust me, you are not the only one um, that sees it. And it's. It's, it's what I often tell my team. It, it comes with the territory. I have two managers and they're both black women. And I love the fact that they can be my voice when I can't because yeah. they can go in and they can be assertive and, and be a bit militant in some areas. And I know that I can't. And, and I, I remember one situation, man, where it's like something happened and I was just like, man, all I said to them, I said, man, just please be my voice. And when you are my voice, come in, come in at this angle because I can't touch this because I understand we are living in a very sensitive to society. And when you, people or persons like us and the partnerships that I have, I, I understand the responsibility of what having a megaphone means. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so... I think at times I, I I have this Malcolm approach and man, but then again, my strategy is behind the scenes, I have to be a bit more methodical with certain things. So I may not can't say it, but I can move in a way where my voice is amplified because it's not many black males in this realm on the level that yeah. I want it. And so being a trailblazer in this space for black men and for mental health was almost as if somebody is the first person to attain a position. It comes with a lot of responsibility. It's going to be fair. Uh, It's going to be unfair. You will have freedom in certain areas and certain areas you want. And what I have always done well is, is, is remain authentic, whether my view is left or right, or if it's down the middle and, being very aware that even in, 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 in white spaces, I don't shift. I don't change. Um, I do pivot a lot because I understand what's happening. And, and, and then too, wisdom is something that I, I rely on a lot because some things you just have to use wisdom on. And, and that's what has really been beneficial to me because there's a lot of things that I see and I'm just like, Oh, man, dude, I don't. Which is why I got my doctorate in healthcare because I love systems. And so I wanted to sit at the tables. I understood 
okay, this is what has happened on a micro level, but these are some of the things that need to happen at a macro level. It's yeah. one thing to hold up your sign and say, we need change, but then it's another thing to sit at the table and say, this is where we are making changes. And so this is why it's so important for individuals like you and myself to be seen because of the research that you've done for the sessions that you have been able to discover certain nuances of your own. We're very layered as black people. And so yeah. the many layers and the many complexities, there's more than one way to connect with us besides just saying you listen to rap. And so, and, and there's so many, that's why I said, I love the, the fact that you have that microphone and, and you're able to say certain things because that's the fulfillment that I'm just like, yo, because I've also learned too, I don't have to be all things. Which is hard though, right? Because I bet you people try to put you in a space where you are all things, right? Like you mentioned the aspect that like being a trailblazer as a black man in mental health, and you very much are because there aren't that many black men in mental health, right? And I'm sure there are there are times when people are like, okay, so we can put you in this space too. Or we can put you in that and that. Oh, it's a black man who actually knows what he's talking about. He got some sense. We're going to put him in this. And it's just like, it also, it, one, I would think it's hard to say no, but two, it would it would take you away from being able to be as fully present as you are on the things that you do. Like the the Just Heal Bro tour, like the fact that that came from a book and being able to go, You the last time I checked, like in over 30 cities at this point, but if you're doing 50,000 other things, you're not going to be able to be in that space. So I can imagine it's hard to say no, because, you know, we, we do see a lot of men, women, black, everything with microphones that don't know what they're talking about. So when you do find someone who actually knows what they're talking about, people try to put you in everything. <laughs> I'm sure you I'm sure you have to turn down stuff and be like, yeah, so I kind of. I'm, I'm, I got this other thing going. Well, that sounds great, but I can't. I can't do that right no, now. No, and, and and I'll tell you this, Doc. It, it's a there is such a power in saying no that I don't think mm -hmm. that we really lean into because we often feel like we have to say yes because if we don't, we're missing something. And what I've learned is that what I say no to protects what I say yes to. And the one thing, okay. Bishop, um, he he tells me often, and uh, we were talking a few months ago. Um, this is in December. <laughs> You're not alone, Dr. J. Everybody, everybody doing this. <laughs> like, but I feel like, I feel like it's also, I was just seeing someone talking about this, about like how you move um, before you're married is how you should move after. And I also want to state that if you already, if you have integrity in your relationship, you already made a dedication to be with that person. You already made stuff changes, of course, when it comes to responsibilities and stuff. I will also add, since we were together for seven whole years, I know you're listening. And yeah, I still hold contempt for this. Since we were together for seven whole years before we got married, like we already have a routine and a process and stuff like that. So stay like certain things should change. But I also think certain things should say the same, like the reason why you, because you don't want to, the reason why you decided to marry this person, the reason why you decided to propose, the reason why you decided to accept that, and for them to be a completely different person, because so like the integrity you had beforehand, because I take relationships very seriously. No, we weren't married before, but I'm not one of those people that's, oh, if you're not married, you're single. So <laughs> like the integrity you had in that relationship, that's the same integrity you need to have when you're married, the same way that this whole aspect of us being a team, and that's that's the person I'm with, and I'm protecting him and respecting him. You need to have that in your marriage too, right? Like I just people certain things will definitely change. People talk more about finances, but as you can as you can see, I'm very open. So we was talking about finances before we got married. I was talking about we had conversations about kids. I'm like, yeah, I I do need a husband who says I love you to your kids. He'd be like, we're not even we're not even engaged. I'm like, I just want you to know because if you hear something that you don't agree with, you should dip. You should go. I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> yeah. And, and and what you're doing is you you just set the parameters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, and I think that, I honestly you know? think more men should do the same. There's certain yes. stuff that's darn flipping well that you're like that irritated you. Why are you keep like, why are you letting somebody get away with that? They wouldn't let you get away with that. Like one of the one of the things I say with my husband all the time is we 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 like over communicate at this point. Right. But in the beginning, it wasn't like that. And I was like, yo, if I have a problem immediately, because I just feel like oh, I did not like that. Right. And knowing you so well, I could tell you would have an issue with something, but you would just let it go. And I would be like, stop doing that because I don't I don't provide you the same grace. OK, you do something wrong immediately. Right. 
you, if I do something wrong, you need to, now he don't have that problem now, but you need to let me know because one, I don't want to continuously keep disrespecting you or your needs. And two, I want you to understand that your voice is going to be heard, right? Just like you mentioned, so many men are not used to their voice being heard. I want you to know that, oh, we're going to have a, a conversation. I get asked all the time, oh, how do you travel and do the speaking engagements and do all that so much? You have, you have children. And I was like, yeah, but did y'all forget I'm married? Yeah, I I talk to my husband about everything. I don't I don't take a gig before a a, a call before seven when I let him know because he's gonna have to be on on, on after eight when I let him know out the state when I let him know. Like we we have that understanding. I, I, I people need to men y'all also need to be like I don't like that. And I'm gonna tell you something else, Doctor J. When you mentioned the fact that like you you feel like you can't move a certain way. I, I, you look like that kind of hurt my heart because I, especially with my husband and I have two boys It's one, because I know it's true, but also because it sucks. I love the fact that you, yeah. your team, you got two women. And I bet you they go to, I bet you they go to bat for you. They'd be like, let me, let me tell you something. You, we already said, no, don't even go to him. We said, no, he's not doing it. Right. Yeah. But that also hurts yeah. my heart because it's just, we we're in this realm where one, it's very rare for black men to be in mental health. But I think part of that starts off at childhood because your emotions being invalidated. But I hate the fact that you feel as though you can't be in a certain space, not only because of being on social media, because I get that aspect, but because of the fact that, yeah, you're a big dude. Like you used to play, you used to play football, right? Obviously yeah. You, just, you, yeah. So being aware of, you don't yeah. want to come off that way. I always tell the story about my patient who was a tall, darker, dark skinned guy who would like physically shrink himself basically because he knew how he was seen. Like he knew how he was seen by other people. Cause he was a tall black dude and he was dark skinned. And I just, I, I hate that. Like, I hate that. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I, I truly do like the, and I don't think it, it, it's very frustrating. Cause it's just, that sucks. Yo, I don't like that. It is, Doc. And, and thank you for saying that, because even you saying that something is happening on the inside of me, because I, I'll be honest, I don't have I have a very small network of clinician people that I actually like. I mean, in constant conversation, because it's and none of those people are here in Texas. I have one, two female friends that are clinicians that and all of us have been tight for, for many years. And then I have a few brothers, but I'm I'm not a part of these networks where. Because again, I, to build uh, sustain, uh, I mean, sustainable friendship takes a person who has learned how to be self-sustainable within themselves. Because you cannot be in any form in an area that you have not developed in. And so for me to hear you say that and knowing that the work that you've done, the work that you are doing, it feels very refreshing and very invigorating to my soul because there's times I remember this one time this lady said something to me crazy and the J of what she old, said I didn't know what she said and give me her information because I, I, I might need to find her but what did she say <laughs> I know listen I tell everybody this yo once you got me on your side be I am a fierce like person what they say when they say that what's their name <laughs> So it's, she didn't really, she, she didn't know who I was and, and I'm not, anybody who's met me, I don't believe in that Hollywood. I don't believe mm -hmm. in that. And with five people walking around you, man, get out of the way. I don't really like that many people walking around in front of me. So, so she had said something to me in regards to, she didn't know that I was a speaker or when that I was a doctor. And so she kind of like tried to sun me in a way and I wasn't tripping, but the people with me, man, why she, she handling you like that? And the OJ would have probably been a bit defensive because, and, and not on some, you don't know who I am, but just kind of like, yo, why are you talking to me like that, period? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't care whether you are, you got letters in front of your name or you got letters behind your name. To me, I grew up in Mississippi and my grandmother had a saying said, it's just nice to be nice. That has never... I don't believe in jerkers being an ass or, or somebody who's just, man, I'm the only boy. I grew up with a bunch of sisters, a lot of women. So for me, man, I just embrace just being nice to people, no matter what I felt. And so to me, it was just on some like, wait a minute, man, you ain't going to talk to me like that. But I also knew if I was to just turn my head to the side and just already knew, oh my God, I like, calm down. That, that <laughs> yeah. thing. That's that. And so 
and I'm sitting there bubbling on the inside because it's just like, all right, man, like to, to, to swallow your pride, to just kind of like tell your, your, your other self, because there's one person sitting here in this chair, but it's about 10 different people yeah. sitting here. And I'm not even talking about no multiple personality because we're layered. W. Du Bois talks about the double consciousness of that. I mean, I, I got to be conscious that I'm a black man. I got to be conscious that I'm a black man as a former athlete, because when people read my bio, the first thing they go to is football. So there is also a perception that they've associated with an athlete or with the jock. So it's you got a doctorate, you a therapist. It's that type yeah. of thing. And man, when I, I wanted to light this lady up and I'm a type of person doc, when I'm upset, I go into my vocabulary bag because I know half the words that I know people don't even comprehend. So I'll just start using big words on you. I too, I too get polite. Like I, like my voice change. Like I get very polite. I'll be like, just to, just see, to. see, you got, you got the nasty. I'll be like, just to clarify, because I want you to walk me through this thinking before I have this conversation with you. The you said this correct. I say correct a lot. Like I just this is what you say correct. Okay. And this is what I said. So where's the disconnect between what I told you to do? You see what I'm saying? Because I don't even, I don't even raise my, somebody's at one point said, oh my goodness, shit, sometimes it's so me. I said, you ain't never even seen me, me. You have, you have never seen, through my husband 14, that, that man has never really seen me, me. You have never seen me be me. You have seen me be like, what you not going to do though. What we yeah. not, what we're not going to, but you know, what's crazy though. Everything that you're saying, you're over here. First of all, it's exhausting. Like First, to be able to verbalize like all of these steps you're going through and you weren't even in the wrong. That's what not just black men, black women. That's what we go through. You're not even in the wrong. This person is talking to you like they have no sense. Um, and you can't even. And that's why people like, oh, I meet match energies. I don't. I Most of the time, people people's energies are negative and I'm not even trying to be malicious. Like I just one of the things I can't stand. And it's so basic. I do not mean people <laughs> like some people will be like, oh, I'm I'm um you know, I'm just honest or, 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 or I'm blunt, honest. And I'm like, I'm one of the most direct people I've ever met. And I, I couldn't tell you anyone who would ever say I was mean. I'm like, unless it's somebody who don't know me, no one who knows me would say I'm re I'm direct. You don't need both. So mean people really make me mad. <laughs> so like when they get mean, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be mean to you now because you was mean to this person and I like them. And I'm trying to be nice, but I don't mean people. Right. But like you're saying all these things that you're thinking of, all of these steps, the mental work, the mental footwork you have to do. And you're not even in the wrong. You aren't even in the wrong. Someone is being disrespectful to you and you can't even, even the way you address it, you're taking a step back, but you're in no way in the wrong. And I don't think people realize the same way black women go through this. Black men go through this too, right? Like I, 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 I very much want everyone to know like black men go through this too. There have been some times when my, my husband, like one of the main reasons I married him is because of his integrity. It's amazing. But sometimes I'd be like, man, you live in according to a rule book that nobody else is playing according to. And if I was there, I would have told them, don't you talk to my man like that. I will go to jail. <laughs> like I have no problem. Don't play with me. Oh, But he's just, and he'll just be like, oh, maybe they didn't mean that. What? Maybe they didn't mean what? Tell me what they said. Because, <laughs> man, because it, it, you got to be like that, Doc. And when you just, it's so exhausting. Yeah. And I'm telling you, and even in dating, I had this lady one time, I guess, quote unquote, shoot her a shot. And I was, I took the compliments, says, thank you for the compliment. And I said, I'm, I'm not, because even, because let me say this. Just because someone is single doesn't mean they're available. Because yep. you could also be working on you. You travel a lot. You have a higher purpose when it comes to trying to make sure you're helping people. Relationships take energy. And if you know you can't put forth that energy, why would you be in a relationship? Single don't mean I want applications. Doc, can you please repeat <laughs> all of that? that you they heard it. I'm sorry. If anything, all this, all this podcast is going to do is make your stock go up. I apologize. So, but it's, I think people don't realize that people think relationships are just like, it could be like the bare bones of it. Right. It could be the fact that black men are always black people overall are sexualized, but it could be that aspect. It could be like, Oh, I just wanted to go on a date. Relationships take time and energy and my time is valuable. Men need to know this too. So you want to go on a date. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm gonna have to put off three hours. I can't do work that I'm supposed to, to go on a date. 
Where is this leading to? Just because you're single doesn't mean you need to, you're in the right space to be in a relationship. Relationships take time. And honestly, all this stuff that you're doing, it should be it should be appropriate to not just, oh, I'm single, but I, there's no way I can commit the time and energy that you deserve right now. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to be honest with you. And no, this isn't a cheat code. I'm not trying to make you like me more. I'm trying to tell you, I, I, I'm working on some big things and this is not a time where I can dedicate the energy that a relationship deserves. Some people think that because you're single, that means that, okay, you're alone. That means you're lonely. But I, I love the fact that more people are being open like you are. Like, well, I'm enjoying you. So I don't know if you follow Dr. J. Dr. J get, takes himself on solo trips. I don't really see many men doing that. I see more women doing that. Dr. J gives himself flowers. I was like, I freaking, I, I love that. So I, I just think it's important to realize this turned into, man, this turned into a relationship. So we're going to do a, we, we'll, pro, we'll try to find a way to do a live too, y'all, because we have so many more questions. We have so many more questions, <laughs> but I think people need to understand that one black men and, and black women are significantly over-sexualized, but like y'all talk about relationships and you don't even know yourself. How does that make sense? What do you like to do outside of work? What are you bringing to the relationship? Have you healed from your previous relationship? Not even just romantic friendships. Do you feel like you bring any, what, what how are you going to, how are we going to form a partnership? Because if you're still working on you, I'm not saying that you can't be with someone, but do you, are you okay with acknowledging the fact that you are still working on you and being open to that in a relationship and being like, if a person decides that's not who they want to be with, be like, okay, because I'm still doing this. You, you're, you're blessing me in so many ways because I feel validated by your words. And again, it's, it's and I'll just give this, this quick timeline. I, so when I, when I was done with football, I, I opened up a business and I started training my boys that were still playing and I grew my business substantially in a short amount of time. And I worked with athletes from all over the NBA, NFL, had a very successful sports performing business. And, and so, and a lot of my training was very detailed and very sports specific. So people used to fly their kids to Houston to work with me. That's how big my business was. And this is 2010 and I shut it down in 2014 when I felt God uh, shifting me into the mental health space. And I started mentoring because I've always worked with teens. My father's a pastor. And so um, he had me working with teens um, at an early age in the church. And, and that's just something that I have, have always had an affinity for. And I experienced most of my trauma and pain in my adolescent years. So I have a real heart for young people. And from 2010 to about 20, to, to, to 2015, people knew me for the work that I did in the community. And then it was very transformative and it was very unconventional because they had never seen a black man working with teenagers in the way that I was in group homes, working with girls who were sex traffic victims, then writing a book for teenage girls. So all of this stuff, right? So, and then I entered grad school. I finished in 20s, eight and started my internship, moved to Dallas. 2020 happens. I make some posts about Kobe after his passing. And, and then I make some posts about black men and George Floyd. And then all of a sudden I do the breakfast club with Taraji and immediately things took off. And I was in my doctoral program and I had to put it on pause because I got a job off at USC and I turned that down and I had all of these moving parts. And it, so if I can paint a clearer picture, imagine flying a plane and building it at the same time. I love that analogy. So that's, <laughs> that's what it felt yeah. like. And I'm trying to get this thing off the ground and still trying to patch some mm -hmm. pockets and so dating was difficult. And I'm going to be very transparent. The girlfriend I had at the time, we lost a child. Okay. It was so much that was happening. Yeah. Um, and, and then a few years later, trying to date again, distance, and going back to what you just said, it's trying to manage how I not volunteer, not sign up for, become this face for Black men mental health. And you're being called everywhere, whether it's suicide or whether it's depression. My son this, my son, my husband, my brother, my uncle. And then somebody says, well, I didn't hear from you today. And I'm like, yo, just give me a day or two. I'm on the road, boo, boo, boo. And I don't have any kids or anything. I'm 
uh, one out of seven children. I'm the only one that's not married, have kids. And I understood that my journey would be different because God told me that it would. And I desired marriage. I've been engaged. I desired kids. I was engaged to somebody had kids. There's nothing more that I've ever wanted to do was to be a father. And then losing and grieving. It took me three years to grieve that, that miscarriage. Took me three years. And there's still days because I feel like, and I know that I'm not, I'll be 42 in three weeks. And there are times I feel like I'm running out of time because I don't want to be an old father because I don't want to become a grandfather in a stage where I should have been his father or her father. And these are just thoughts in my mind. So it comes to the dating part and trying to get somebody to understand the amount of energy that I have to extend Sometimes it's, and here's my issue and here's your issue. I'm sure we make it look easy. So no one never Yo. thinks the many layers that we have to work through to even yeah. show up. And be, and be transparent you know? about the way we do show up. And, 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 and then be transparent and then be on point and then have to organize mentally Virtually, because I'm sure I've listened to your to, to your content and, and I know you work like me. You got to see the words. You got to put something over here because you want to make sure when you say it, it lines up with this. All of this mental work. And then somebody says, well, you didn't text me back. Listen. <laughs> and Doc, and then if I articulate this, oh, you're closed. I, I'm not. I'm literally trying. And Doc, this is a first. And you Doc, this is the first time I've been in school for the past seven years. I know it. When you were traveling, doing your Man. tour and being like, and you were talking about your PhD, I said, how the heck is he doing this? This is insane. Doc, when I tell you the weight that I gained, the stress that I was under, and because we make it look easy, nobody ever thinks it. So it's like, and I remember they dissing it. It was like, I'm showing up, I'm hopping on flights, hopping off stage, going to fly here. And one day I just said, man, I'm yep. tired. And it's like, what do you mean you're tired? I said, I'm exhausted. I just poured into 400 men, flew home, stayed at the airport to fly to come see you. And you're upset that I don't have enough energy to stay up and talk on the couch. Which, which we could understand why she was upset. And, and, I under- and I'm all, we I can understand. also understand why you tired. You see what I'm saying? Like both of these are true. <laughs> Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Both things are true. And this is when I tell people like the distance thing, because that's what I've done distance stuff the past because of I'm travel and work. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm not home. And so I was like, all right, let me and let me tell you something that distance, man. If if you guys don't have have not built a true connection and I'm not talking about sex and physical, but a connection with yeah. this and with that. If you don't feel that person away from them, you're in you trouble. You are. Me and my husband, the toughest time in our relationship was I went to my PhD program after we were together for three years. And my husband is not a phone person. And we learned that so quickly. But we never had to be phone people because we were in the same state. So then I would just be like, this is really, this is really, what's going on? And it's just, well, you know what? I'll be honest. I didn't, I I never thought you were a phone person, but it wasn't inconvenient until then. We didn't have to over communicate because it would just be like, oh, I'm out. So I'm going to just, I'm going to just see you when I, when I get back or whatever. The amount of, that was like the, and, and also we were broke in our, in my PhD program. So half the time we was fussing because it was just like, I'm be real with you. I really just want to hang out and I ain't about to spend time with no, nobody else. So most of the time I'm spending time alone. If you don't have a firm base, when I, when, before we got engaged like that long, it was the most, I cannot, t- I, I feel like emotionally I regressed. I was just be like, I'm over here picking fights. This is stupid. And it's all because the communication is bad, but we came from a firm base to discuss it. But if we didn't have that, if we didn't have that, can you imagine? And people being comfortable, comfortable with independent, cause we're pretty, we're pretty like independent couples. We've always been that way. But the number of times I have heard, and this is from women and men, your husband lets you travel without him. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I don't understand the question. Yeah. What do you mean? Let what? <laughs> I yeah. like what you. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I lose my shackle today? But it's just like that inherent. I was just like, you think my husband don't know what I'm doing? You think I don't? You think my husband don't know what I'm doing? 
this is the person I'm married to. Exactly. Why would he not know what I'm doing? But even just that thought process of just, wow. Well, he must be really kind to let you. What? What do you mean? It's just, if you don't have a firm base and relationships do take work, I think it's appropriate. I think it's, I think this is a good example for people to understand that like you sharing that this is, I, you deserve someone who can provide more time and energy and I don't have it. And, and I don't want you to accept less. I'm going to let you know what I don't have to give. And if you don't accept that, that's on you. I'm just telling you, right? People try to go in halfway and it's just like relationships take time. And you know what would have been the first conversation after you exp- expressed the fact that you had didn't have the energy and they like, okay, still let's try. You never have time for me. I told you I wasn't going to have time. I told you this. You said you was fine with it. And here we are. And I told you, and now we done built, we done spent more time together. So now I'm in this too, but I told you I should have trusted my gut. I told you I didn't have it. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just, I told you this, man. You said it was cool. I knew it wasn't going to be cool. I should have trusted you. Should I should have trusted me. Just like this. What it, I'm just saying, I've seen it happen clinically. And I'd be like, I'm confused because you also, we also discussed that you felt as though you weren't ready for a romantic relationship. And I just, I want to clarify. Did you say you were moving in with someone? I'm confused. What's happening? What happened in our last session? Like you'll talk to people in session and be like, so wait, I'm looking at my therapy notes and I'm seeing that you said you weren't ready for a relationship. And now you're telling me you're thinking of moving in with someone. Help me. I'm missing some steps. Like, what are we, what are we not missing? But it's because one of the things I say are that lead to a lot of poor decision are loneliness and nostalgia. I think a lot of people aren't letting go of relationships that no longer serve them or evolving the relationships into a, into a new thing or people you can be alone and not be lonely but there are going to be bouts of loneliness we're we're meant to socialize with other people we're humans and that can lead to some different stuff but i think if you want to really understand it you need to listen when people say are saying no <laughs> and not take no as if this is an indictment on you or your character yeah. or you're not because that people's brains begin to do all type of, uh, of funky mm-hmm. things because it's like, well, I, I mean, I've heard it all. I, you say you want a good woman and I'm just like, ma'am, I'm just, I mean, it's just, who do you think you are? And I'm like, this lady said, you think you're all that? I said, I said, excuse <laughs> me? And I, 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 all that, all that, and then she come back, I'm sorry, I didn't really mean that. I'm just saying, I just really want a chance. And I was just like, ma'am, this, this, and all I ever said was just like, Yo, I'm I'm not in that space. I was like, thank you for the compliment, but I'm not. Man, this woman went off doc no. and then came back. I'm talking about the amount of times that I've had to block and just and, and I'm and I, and again, it's even in moments where I know it's not a good fit for me, I still use wisdom in that space because I know this is the era of screenshot, voice recording. I know I'm getting all type of Anytime somebody says something crazy, like, and, I know you recorded this, whatever. <laughs> it's like, for me, and, and, cause for me, what, like, I've seen it happen. It's, they'll send this to a place you're speaking at. And I, I mean, I've just seen so many things, but I, I, I do thank God for the grace and also for the wisdom and the insight of men that I have in my life that really keeps me grounded. But I've always been a pretty grounded person, even when I played ball. So I wasn't no wild dude, wasn't perfect, but I wasn't no dude who just moved carelessly, you know what I'm saying, through life. And I've always been a person like, you know what, let, let me let me process this and let me think. And that becomes an issue for a lot of women when men process and think, because now it's not on their time. Yeah, it's a different speed sometimes. My husband has always told me, he's, your processing speed is a problem because it's very fast. <laughs> and a lot of times I want answers now, but because this is someone who like I care about and I understand the aspect of people process stuff differently, I've had to slow down. It is so tough. And I don't even think it's slowed down because it's like a slow processing fee- speed. I think, I think my husband's processing speed is appropriate. I think mine is absurd. And then as a result, I have to just be like, yeah, even the people I work with, they're like, yeah, so we actually need more time to read what you sent. So if we could just have some more time and I'm like, for real, I think I gave it to you like a whole day ago, yo, what are we doing here? What are we doing? We, we working or we playing, you know, and it's just, I mean, like, what are we, what's happening? But you have to have respect for people and to understand that it's just, all right, well, everybody don't work the same way. And to understand that, 
But I, I get the fact that like some people will see it as just, okay, well, I need an answer now. And I tell a lot of people, men, women included, just be like, if somebody's trying to rush you to an answer now, tell them, okay, well, thank you for the help. Now the answer is no. And I appreciate you helping me make that decision quicker. Because if you're not respecting my time, you're not going to, you're just not respecting me. Right. But I think you're, I think a lot of people don't, don't acknowledge that people's processing speeds are different. They don't respect that. They automatically take it in as, oh, maybe you're just trying to either trying to let me down easy or people go into these negative thought spirals. Um, some stuff genuinely isn't about them. I've literally had to just be like, listen, I know it's going to look like I'm in a funky mood and I am, but it's not towards you. I'm just still processing stuff that happened today. And I, I am in a funky mood, but it has nothing to do with you. However, I make it a point to ver verbalize that because I know what my face looks like. I know what my face looks like. And I know it's going to take me some time to get out of that mood. And typically that's the point where it's amazing to have a partner that does this and be like, all right, you might as well just go upstairs and process that. And I can handle what's happening downstairs with food and dinner. But like, you got to be able to state that. I know it looks like I'm pissed and I am, but it's not a you. <laughs> But I can't, I can't fix my face right now. I'm still mad. That's the emotional maturity. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I love that, Doc. I love that. Well, Listen, we, we got I know. We got to do another yeah, one. So, so we're going to do a live, y'all. We're going to do a live. I only got to, y'all, legit got to one question. And I sent, if y'all, if y'all were looking at my stories at that time, I, I was adding the, the and tagged Dr. J. I was like, look at all these. And then we still have some that are actually on the post. Um, one of them was a very good point because, and you can tell me, have you seen this? I don't see many stages where it's a man and a woman licensed mental health professional doing an event. No, no, I think we, I think we may get to do that. Um, yeah, with, at, yeah, with, so we'll both be at Taraji's, yeah. um, summit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be the first time that I've actually seen it. So, uh, and, and that may be the start and we may be on the precipice of something that we can see more of because the one question that I think somebody asked, how can we begin having healthier conversation with black men and black women? And I think that it starts with individuals like me yeah. and you. And so I'm forward to, to taking the stage with you and having individuals like us who, who are so balanced with our clinical perspective, but also with our lived yeah, experience. Yeah, just being normal people. I, Cause some people are a little too like chill. Yeah, but they also said, they not only said that, they said, how are y'all going to fix it? What? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you something, Doc. Hey, I, I'm going to tell you something that what I've had to learn. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not the answer. I'm part of the solution, but I'm not the answer. Yeah. So I'm not going to bear that weight on trying to fix anything. You and I are doing it every day. Every day that you drop content, you're fixing it. Every day that I'm on stage with these brothers or I'm sitting in a boardroom and making decisions on how we're going to do these rollouts for these health care and for these mental health initiatives, we're fixing the problem. Like we, we cannot say that we're going to sweep the beach. You know what I mean? <laughs> Clean. No, I'll pick up one starfish at a time and, and toss, toss that John back. <laughs> and the, once we move into that space, you now take on a burden that was never meant to yeah. be yours. We're not, I'm, I'm not the Messiah. Yeah, because that's another thing. Some so, people begin to lionize an individual instead of the initiative or the thing or that they're working for. And then what happens is when that person disappoints you, you get rid of everything that they're working for. And it's, well, it never should have been about me. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to disappoint you at some point in time. I'm human. But this initiative I was working for, this bill I was doing, that's what you should have been. That's what you should have been like championing, not me. It's not about me. Like that's, I, don't put me on no pedestal. Please don't. I'm going to fall off. There's going to be stuff you don't like. Yeah. I didn't ask to be up here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to climb on down. <laughs> I uh -uh, I'm going to be right in the crowd. No, thank you. But that's a lot of people do that. They'll champion individuals. And I'm like, yeah, but what is that individual working for? Because if they have this initiative, if they do something wrong, does that mean you're going to get rid of the work that you were doing for this initiative that you believed in? Did you believe you can believe in people? But also like the, the 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 work that's supposed to be done, right? Like you're working in your your doctorate is in healthcare admi administration. We need the systems in place, right? It's great to have these clinicians, but these clinicians need to be backed up by systems that let them do what they need to do, right? Which is incredibly helpful. But I want I'm already over time. Dr. J, tell everybody where they can find you. It's also going to be in the show notes. And of course, y'all will advertise when we're gonna do a live, but tell everyone where they can find you. Yes, you guys can find me, King J Barnett, across all media platforms. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, or, or X rather, uh, and then 
coaching site, kjbcoaching.com. And then all of my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles in some areas. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I, 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 we'll do the live, but I also probably will have you come on the show. But I can't wait to meet you in person in D.C. I'm already I'm already looking for like my hip hop outfit. I might, y'all, I might get an airbrush shirt for this joint because she's having a, <laughs> like a, she's doing like a house party. I might legit, I might have to get an airbrush shirt and uh, make it happen. Oh, I'm doing one. If you a shirt, yeah, I'll I think do I'm going to do one. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again. Oh, oh yeah, I'm getting a rope chain. Yeah. The rope chain was never in question. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah. happening. I just got to, yeah. I just got to figure out how we zhuzh it up. You know what I'm saying? But the rope chain was happening. Curbing on curbing. Like yeah. it's, it's going on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's, it's happening. But thank you so much.